everyone, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to you too. You can feel free to go check out my other videos on the B7 and B8. I do a bunch of DIYs and tool reviews. Super quick PSA about the video that I did recently. Go check that out up here. I was talking about how I'm welcoming any and all of you, subscriber or not, to send in a video if you're having a problem with your car that you can't quite figure out. Send it to me, I'm gonna post it on the channel and we'll harness the knowledge of the community around us here to hopefully help you out. What I'm doing today is replacing my OE lower PCV hose with this ECS unit and we're gonna talk about the PCV system quite a bit. I believe ECS created this hose this last year in 2020 after they released an upper PCV hose of their own brand as well the year before. Now I know that they sell these hoses together as a pair or individually, which is how I bought this. Both of their hoses are a three-ply silicone, but we'll take a closer look at the OE lower PCV versus this one a little bit later. This exact hose will fit a whole whack of the 2.0 FSI engines found across a number of the VAG cars, including the front-wheel drive A3s, the A4B7, the Passat B6, and then of course the Quattro B7, which is what I'm going to be working on, plus the Mark II TTSs, all of the VW EOSs, and then the Golf Rs and the Golf and Jetta Mark Vs. The reason I decided to do this is because I actually broke the bottom half of the top clip here from the OE PCV hose, and I want to make sure that I don't have a leak. Plus, the silicone construction should be a little bit more resilient to the temperature and contaminants that are going to be present in the engine bay here. Plus, it'll match my upper PCV hose, and that ought to give me, what, one extra all-wheel drive horsepower? Going into this, just know that replacing either one of these hoses will not improve or fix what you've likely heard as PCV-related carbon buildup problems. This is strictly to slightly improve the OE system a little bit and add some style points. So, what is the PCV system and how does it work? Also, if you don't care how it works, feel free to just scrub ahead in the timeline by jumping to the next chapter and go straight to the hose install. So to fully understand what role this hose that we're about to replace plays in the overall system, let me go through the PCV circuit in some detail. First of all, PCV, that's just an acronym for positive crankcase ventilation, and it's all about safely relieving pressure caused by cylinder blow-by in a way that's friendly-ish to the environment and theoretically safe for your car. Positive refers to built pressures, crankcase is really the sealed long block, and ventilation is the removal of the pressure. I say theoretically safe for your car because the PCV system, in combination with direct injection only engines, which is what this is, is basically the formula for carbon buildup on the top of the intake valves. And although we might be doing a good job burning off extra hydrocarbons from the blow-by, we're also slowly and ironically reducing the efficiency of the vehicle. Anyways, let's go over the circuit. First, as combustion occurs in all of the cylinders, boom, 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 boom. And because of the sheer pressure that's present during this time, some of the unburned fuel and gases shove their way down past the piston rings and into the crankcase. That's why it's called blow-by. It's literally blowing by the piston rings. This blow-by effect pressurizes the crankcase, and because we don't want this building pressure to find a weak point in the block and go exploding out of it somewhere, this mixture of gas and solids needs to go somewhere in a controlled manner. But, minus controlling the blow-by pressure, the other main goal of the system is to send this mixture somewhere it can be burned again so that there are less contaminants going out of your exhaust and into the environment. That somewhere is up, and specifically into the valve cover, and then out again. Yes, out again. It's a little bit vague, but that's because the routing is a little bit more simple in a naturally aspirated engine and slightly more complex in a turbocharged system. Okay, I swear we're going to look at how it travels in a second, but you need to also understand that blow-by isn't just gas. There's also this oily sludge that's in vapor form, and we don't want to send this part of the mixture to be reburned, which means we want there to be as much oil separation of the blow-by as possible along the PCV system until it's reburn time. And how might we achieve maximum oil separation in a standard PCV system before reburn? By doing it multiple times. Note I just said standard system. I know the car guy in you is like, duh, catch can, but we're not talking about those today. Right, so pressure is constantly being created and looking for the path of least resistance. Now you can't see it from the outside of the car here, but there are passages on the side of the block that encourage blow-by to pass into the back of the oil filter housing assembly, which is roughly back down in there. And you can see these passages in this image that I pulled off the ECS site here. Plus, in this technical image, 
Notice the boxy area on the top of the assembly. That's our first oil separator in the system, which allows oil to condense and then collect down into the assembly while the once separated blow-by now continues on up and through the lower PCV hose. Obviously, that's why we're here today. And I bet you're starting to get the sense that, yes, this is just a small part of the overall system, but it's not a deletable part of the PCV system and it has no valving in it. It just needs to move blow-by from A to B. We can see here in the car that it comes out around the back, up and through some stuff, and then meets up into the single entry point on the main PCV valve assembly. Have you ever looked at your valve cover and wondered why the back part of it is raised? Well, it's because there's another oil separator in there, and that's the next leg of the blow-by journey. So with this air and oil vapor mixture coming through the hose, you can actually see the channel right here where it connects it into the separator. It's just a baffle not unlike the other oil separator or any catch can, there's just a design in here that is made to allow vapors to hit the surfaces and condense on itself so that it turns into a liquid and drops down and away and separates out of the air mixture. And that's exactly what happens. There's an opening at the back of the baffling right here that allows the condensed oil sludge to go back into the oiling system. With the second attempt at oil separation complete, the blow-by moves into the infamous PCV valve. Note that this connection point right here doesn't do anything. It can only travel through this connection right here. Now let me bust out the sticky notes to help illustrate how the remaining two scenarios of blow-by travels through the valve. Scenario number one is when a vacuum exists in the intake manifold. That'll be the case when the car's at idle or during decel or basically any time that the engine is not seeing boost. Of course, the engine's still sucking in air, it's running, it's just not charged air. Also remember for later that any scenario where you can utilize vacuum to pull air out of the cam cover is great for relieving crankcase pressure. So while a vacuum exists in the system downstream, blow-by will come out of the oil separator, pass through the diaphragm inside of the PCV valve, and pass up and across this check valve. This is a one-way check valve in here, so air can pass this way, but never allow it to come in the opposite direction. Just to prove the point, and to demonstrate how a lot of people check their PCV valve to make sure that it's still working, working being that the check valve in here is operating correctly, what you can do is try to blow into this piece with your mouth, and that recreates the scenario where there is boost pressure uh, blowing up into the check valve, and it should snap closed in reaction to blocking that pressure coming in. So right now, if we look inside, you should be able to just barely see that white valve in there. It's in the up position, which means that air could flow through the PCV valve, through the channel, and then out here into the intake manifold. And I will put my mouth on here, so don't say I've never done anything for you. And I'm gonna blow into this piece and you'll hear it snap close. Hear that? And now if we look inside, you can barely see it. It's further down now, it's closed. So the vacuum will suck the blow-by through the upper PCV hose into the intake manifold and back into the cylinders for a reburn. Scenario one, journey complete. Unless scenario two. So if instead of vacuum in the intake, there is positive pressure, in other words, if the compressor is building boost during acceleration, this boost pressure finds its way across the opposite direction of the upper PCV hose and it forces the check valve in the PCV closed. So now what? especially given that while RPMs increase during acceleration, so too does the amount of blow-by that's still being created in the engine. So this is still a really important time to evacuate the gases. And this is where the rear breather hose comes into play. While pressure is backed up because the main check valve is closed, the blow-by hangs a U-turn in the diaphragm. There's a different channel in here that reroutes it through this port right here. And it passes once again through the valve cover in an independent passageway through this hose, through the pipe, and down into the turbo intake. You can see the hole where it comes out right there. It's pretty large. At that point, it gets sucked into the turbo and then pushed through the intercooler piping, through the intercoolers, and eventually back up the intake and then into the cylinders for a reburn. Scenario two journey complete. With the rear breather hose off, you can see there's an orange flap in there. That is yet another one-way check valve and like the main check valve in the main PCV valve, it only allows air to leave the valve cover, not enter it. So with this blow-by pressure coming out of the valve cover, 
It's aided in moving through this pipe by the fact that there's always a vacuum downstream. That's because with the fresh air rushing through the air intake, there is a low pressure zone created across the hole at the bottom of the breather hose here, and it helps suck the air out of the hose and move the blow-by down into the compressor. Sadly, this is the perfect time and it's really easy to illustrate why these cars exactly get so much oil in the intake track. Look at the inside ribbing of the rear hose here, covered in blow-by oil. And looking down into the turbo, look at that there, sort of on the left in the center. That's oil just sitting there in front of the compressor fins. It's also why you can take off the side mount intercoolers in these cars and dump oil out of those things, plus the charge pipes. It's also why we get so much oil and carbon buildup on the back of the intake valves. Overall, I would say the stock PCV system is actually quite successful in achieving the reburn for emission standards, but ultimately it's just a massive sacrifice for the efficiency of the car. You can see why so many people tackle the PCV system and modify it to block some of the ports, run catch cans. Although I hope this video was helpful if you're going to pursue some of that work, it's really important that you manage the crankcase gas somehow. I'm not done that journey for this car yet, but for today, it's finally time to move on to the install. If you just arrived to the install chapter, I'm telling you, you just missed some good PCV education, but it's time to remove the OE lower PCV hose. As usual, I stop in on the Bentley and Haynes manuals just to see if they have any tips, and they don't. These ones do make mention of the lower hose just by diagram, and the Haynes talks about the breather hose and the upper PCV valve, but nothing about how to remove the lower hose. Regardless, I can tell that this is really just going to be an exercise of dexterity and a test on how well you can patch together your tools to get at those clips. The Haynes manual actually calls this type of clip a quick connect, and sure, it might quickly connect, but it does not quickly disconnect. It actually has four points of contact. It's on the top and bottom right here, and then on the left and right, and you need to simultaneously remove all four points in order to pop these hoses off. I'm going to try to remove this without breaking anything further. I actually already did snap the clip on the bottom maybe a year ago, and I'm going to try to remove as few items as possible to get at this hose. I did it! Yes! Now that I'm done taking out the hose, I will admit that that just took me 55 minutes to do. It was actually pretty annoying, a little bit more annoying than even I thought. So what I ended up doing was just moving the coolant expansion tank. You can just take it out of those two tabs there. You need the head and arm space to see what you're doing. Then I had to take out the PCV main valve in order to wiggle the hose out eventually. And in terms of any other connectors, all I did was remove four sensors. There was the, the map, then the throttle position motor, and then two big guys that are down there. You can see the purple connectors. And I just had to break one zip tie, the other end of which flew off into oblivion, and I don't know where it is. Other than that, it was just a matter of using a pick tool and slowly working around these clips. Super annoying. I just have constant pressure sort of pulling down and away while I'm working on the edges and eventually just popped off. Just to show you exactly what I used, this is the big pick tool, not the small one. You do need some reach. I felt compelled to shove my finger inside of the oil filter assembly opening there that connects to the lower PCV hose. I was shocked to see how grimy this actually is. I was definitely expecting the sludge from the blow-by, but so dark, so thick, and kind of grainy too. Wow. Let's take a quick look at the OE versus ECS hose before the install here. Right off the bat, I noticed that the shape is pretty much one for one, which is great because there is not a lot of clearance around these hoses and they need to fit really well. They also need to have a bit of articulation just to install. I was using every bit of flexibility out of this hose to fish it out of the top. And I imagine it's going to be equally or just as hard to get this back into the car too. So looking at the inside, you can see the 
three ply layer, just as advertised of the silicone hose, which is cool. Um, but I did notice that although flexible in some benefits, if this has to move a little bit back, I noticed that it pinches really easily right at this bend here. So we'll take a good look at this once it's installed and make sure everything is okay. Halfway update, yeah, this is a struggle. So the hose is in, but it's in just a bit of a mock position right now. I had to also disconnect one of the connectors on the high pressure fuel pump to get some working room up there. And likewise, I had to disconnect the N80 valve and get it up out of the way. And its connector was sort of in the way too. You're gonna have a lot of time with your hand jammed in the back here. So it was a bit of a struggle in the sense that first I tried to take the bottom end and feed it down and back and around. That did not work. What I ended up doing was piecing together three long zip ties and feeding it through the tube to give myself some leverage so I could pull in both ends because you just don't have enough room to push and pull when it's back there. And what I did was I took the top end and I fed it up through here, used my hand in the back to push, push, push while I was pulling. And then eventually there was enough there that I could take the needle nose and yank it up in the position that you finally see here. Excuse the shaking and the wacky angle. This is the best I can show you of how I decided to clock the band clamp because now that we're not using quick connects, you need to find a way to get enough room to tighten that thing down and get it there in the first place. So what I did is I attached this rig. It's a seven mil attached to a swiveling socket with an extension that is a wobble. And that was the way I could reach in. I would push it all the way back on the left with that setup. Then I had a little flat blade screwdriver and I kept pushing the right hand side of the band until it was fully seated. And that gave me enough room to tighten it down and the connection is quite good. And I'm all done. Things are all buttoned up and I can finally say that no, there are no kinks in the line. Once the ends of the hose are all seated fully onto wherever they connect to, uh, it's perfect. There's not a lot of slack, but uh, it's nice and firm. It fits really well with everything that's surrounding it. I'll also note in a very small way that since the hose now comes over the top of the PCV valve, it actually kind of blocks that one screw down there and it makes putting the valve back onto the valve cover a little bit more tricky, but obviously it fits just fine. I decided to clock my band clamp at the top just like that. And I'd say the final fit and finish is quite nice. Overall, this project took me about two and a half, maybe three hours of wrench time. And is it worth it? I'm actually undecided. It's a bit of a coin toss. Yeah, it looks kind of nice. I'm sure the product is a little bit better than the OEM hose, but it's kind of a pain in the ass and quite minimal performance returns. So I think this one's up to you. As always, thank you so much for watching. I had a really good time working on the B7 here and I enjoyed myself researching the PCV system so I was able to bring you some of that knowledge too. If you had a good time watching, please consider subscribing and I hope to see you next time. Thanks.